Welcome to Beauty at Work. We are in between seasons at the moment, so please enjoy this clip from one of our episodes. Where in your work now would you say you encounter beauty? What is that? Uh, does that word actually mean something in relation to your experience of work? Uh, and and where, where would you encounter it? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, so I would say yes, it has to do a lot with my work and you encounter it everywhere. <laughs> um, I think, I think you, people would be amazed if you, if you spent time around scientists with how often the word beauty is used. Um, it feels like several times a day in conversations with my colleagues or even just sitting by myself at my desk, you know, someone will, I will say, it's so beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. It's one of the most common words in science to describe um, a study, an experiment, a finding uh, is beauty. So I think it's interesting to reflect a little bit about why, you know, why do scientists gravitate toward this word of all the words? And what do we really mean when we say beauty? So I think, you know, a lot of people, there's kind of the, you know, uh, I don't know if we, we curse on this podcast. But, That's fine. I uh, like you. <laughs> you know, like, like I remember in high school with Facebook, there was this like, I of science, right? And it would like everybody followed it and it would just like show like explosions or pictures of a microscope or something. And and those things are cool. They make an impression on you, right? They're, but but it's not really science. It's more nature. Like that the universe exists is cool, right? And we love that. But science is this process of discovery. And I make that point to to contrast what um what I would say is like something being pretty and something being beautiful, which is that um, in science, you can generate a lot of pretty images. Like if you look under a microscope at a virus, um, uh, you can see, you know, you, you can choose what colors you want to use. You can, we, we have all kinds of, the technology is amazing now to zoom in, to look at life in ever greater detail, to label, um, intricate pieces of the cell with fluorescent uh, signals that make them light up in these brilliant colors. Um, and you can generate these very, you know, aesthetically beautiful images that, that leave an impression on you um, that are very pretty. But if they don't communicate something, they don't reveal something about the world, they actually aren't that beautiful to a scientist, right? Um, just a, a, a microscopy image of the inside of a cell can look very pretty, but I wouldn't say, wow, it's so beautiful, right? Um, because because when I, when I use that word in science, what I mean is that I understand something now that I didn't understand before. So I think like this is what I, what I find really interesting, think, just observing how I and my colleagues use the word beauty without even thinking about it. What we mean is now I understand something I didn't before, right? It's beautiful because it revealed to me what I wanted to know. Um, and so like, I, I mean, I have countless examples. So, I mean, like I was, I was presenting a classic paper in immunology um, last week and they have what is objectively the ugliest image you've ever seen. It's like a fuzzy gray box uh, with this like kind of ugly contorted uh, strand kind of running through the middle. It's not a pretty picture, but it was the experiment that definitively showed one of the fundamental things that shaped our understanding of how immune memory works um, and how we're able to generate immune memory against every virus that exists. Uh, and so to me, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen because you see it, if you just see it for a, its aesthetic value, it's very low. But if you understand what it's what it's showing you it's so beautiful because now you see you see reality in a new way uh and you see exactly what you wanted to know right um so so i think that like that that is where we encounter beauty or where i encounter beauty as a scientist you know we had a visiting um lecturer from the rockefeller university uh gabriel victoria um, who's one of, you know, one of my favorite scientists. He doesn't actually work that closely on what I study, but from afar, I really love what he does because he comes up with these really elegant techniques. There's a component of elegance um, to reveal very simple but fundamental things about the immune system. So, um, you know, 
not needing to know about the jargon too much, like there's this question when you when you're responding to a virus for the second time, are the cells that go into the lymph node into this special thing called the germinal center reaction? Are those the same cells that responded the first time you saw the virus or are they new cells? And it's a simple question, um, but he's developed this really elegant technique that that reveals it through these absolutely stunning um, microscopic images of what's happening inside of a mouse, um, where you can see the difference between a new cell and a cell that was activated during the first exposure. Um, and, and he was presenting last week, and when he puts the images up, they're just so beautiful. Like, I'm so moved, like almost, almost to the point of tears, not because there's a lot of pretty colors. There's a lot of images in science that have a lot of pretty colors, right? His images do have a lot of pretty colors, but what makes it beautiful is what it shows, like so clearly because of the elegance of the system. Um, so I think beauty really is this experience of understanding something. And it's a phrase we use um, either when, when in the moment of understanding, like it's so beautiful, but also when we see that something has the potential. So I was presenting last week and my boss, you know, I put up my experimental design and he said, that's a really beautiful approach, right? We haven't even done the experiment yet, but, but the approach is beautiful because you can see that this will reveal something about reality to us. Um, and so like as a scientist, because that's what we are so fascinated by, a thing that's beautiful is the thing that fills that desire that we have, that meets it in, in an adequate way that actually reveals it, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is, I mean, it's one of the key findings in our in our research on scientists is, 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 yeah, there's certainly, as you say, the beauty of pretty pictures and, you know, the sensory beauty that that could be sometimes stunning if you're an astrophysicist or something, you know, but, um, and there's also, you know, maybe beauty as a heuristic, you know, as a, as a guide to truth and so forth. But really, what seems to be fairly universal among scientists is the beauty of understanding, you know, this ability to glimpse, um, the inner logic of a system or, or grasp the sort of the hidden order that's underlying, uh, you know, some, some, some data. Um, would you say that, that, uh, this sort of beauty is about, um, does it have to do with getting at better explanation of why things are the way they are? Or is it just simply even grasping, ah, oh, this is how things are, even if we don't quite understand why, um, like is it is it is it just the revealing of something hidden, or does does it also have to do with um, explaining causality or something you know at that to that level? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I'll probably cop out and say that it's a little bit of both. Like there's a certain there's a certain marvel just in discovering the new, right? Something new, something that was obscure before becomes clear. Uh, there's a beauty in that moment. But of course, it's more beautiful if it's something that also unlocks uh, a bigger picture, right? Um, that, that shows even more. So like I, the student who works with me now did a, a simple experiment last week. Um, and as we were looking through his data at a certain point, I said, wow, this was a really beautiful experiment, right? Why? Because in a little piece of his data, that revealed something clearly in a way that none of our previous experiments had done it. It changed how I understood, not the entirety of our project, but, but a certain section of our project. It, it made everything fall into place, that things that I thought I understood before, now that I see this piece, all of that makes more sense, right? And in that moment, you really sense that something beautiful is happening because you, you could, you could taste it before. You were already studying those things before, but this new piece, like everything suddenly makes so much more sense in light of this new piece of information. Um, and I think that those are the most beautiful moments. It's not only when you discover something new, but when that new thing that you discovered also makes everything else more beautiful too, right? Because now everything else makes even more sense than it did before. I think it's analogous, you know, in a lot of, you know, I don't think that this is unique to science. Like if I think of my relationship with my girlfriend, like if she suddenly, you know, we're having coffee and she tells a story about her childhood that shaped her personality, right? There may be five quirks of her personality that I already love, 
that I already noticed in love. But this story reveals the origin or in, or some part of the origin. There's still more to be discovered about the origin of those quirks. But now the origin is revealed. My tenderness toward all of those things that I already noticed in love is more because I know I know more where they came from, right? So there's this, I really, my experience of doing science is very much, it's, it's a form of intimacy. You're always, you never um, exhaust your relationship with, um, a person with another human being, there's always more that you could know. You could always become more intimately familiar with that person. Um, and it's this, I think it's really the same with science, that there's always more we could know about reality and we do experiments to grow in intimacy um, with, with, with reality, with this thing that we love, whether it's a virus or a person. Great, great. Uh, can beauty actually uh help us better understand things and so there's the beauty you talk about the beauty of understanding but is can beauty be um uh useful in some way to to help us understand? so i'm thinking in terms of particularly science communication uh and do you find that that you have to sort of think about beauty in some way in order to help people better understand yeah i think I do. I mean, yeah, I have a lot of opinions about this as a as a vaccine scientist <laughs> in 2022. Um, there's there's, you know, a lot of conversation about how the public um, receives what we discover in science and how it's communicated to everybody. Um, I do think, you know, maybe I don't know if talking about beauty per se would help, but talking about these things that why do we do science? We do science because we want to understand the world um, and, and science then what you discover isn't a prescription, right? It isn't, it doesn't tell you exactly how you should behave. It doesn't tell you exactly um, what you should do, but it tells you more about how the world is. And it's never the final story, but it's the best we have. And, and it's beautiful. It's not just the best we have, so we have to suck it up and deal with it. It's the best we have. And it's really amazing that we can know what we do know, even though it's never, we never know everything. So I think, that like too often, you know, science gets wrapped up in messaging, right? That there's a certain, because this is true, it would be great if people behaved in this way for this desired outcome. But then instead of communicating the totality of that, you just say, science says you have to behave this way. You've now stripped away all of what's interesting about science, all of what's beautiful, because you lose all of the nuance of, um, of why you would want to change your behavior in response to science. Because when I see something, a new discovery, it makes me want to change how I do my research because I know reality is different than how I thought it was before, right? So if I know that a virus is airborne, I want to wear a mask because I want to protect myself and the people around me. Um, but, but if I'm just told science says you have to do this, uh, I lose the fact that, that this is really me responding to what science is telling us about reality. Um, and I think that it, we, we probably could benefit from trusting people more, giving people more uh, benefit of the doubt that you, know, you, you can understand these things. If, if we explain, you know, this is what we think we know, this is how we think we know it. We don't know everything, but based on this, right? Like we would recommend this for these reasons um, and let people evaluate that the reasons are reasonable and not just you're being told you have to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I want to ask you a bit about the consequences of encountering beauty. And so one of the things we find in our research is that uh, frequently encountering beauty in uh, scientific work is associated with um, higher levels of well-being. So everything from uh, mental health to sense of meaning and purpose and um, overall life satisfaction and so on. Uh, do, you, do you find that encountering beauty in your scientific work has an impact on you personally and on your life as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, first of all, a scientist is a human being, right? So, so I don't suddenly, you know, uh, become not my full human self when I go into the lab and start doing science or, or, or start reading the most recent publications in my, in my field, right? I, I'm still a human being. So a human being who encounters beauty uh, who is, you know, in wonder in front of the world, right, it, is going to be happier, right? It makes perfect sense to me that like a, a person in whatever they're doing that thinks the world is beautiful 
um, because of something that happened. Maybe they fell in love. Maybe they saw the sunset. Maybe they saw a really cool experiment, right? Something has made you think that life and the world is beautiful. You're happy, right? Uh, so I think, yeah, of course, like as a scientist, experiencing beauty at my work is part of experiencing beauty in my life. And it makes me uh, more convinced that life is a good thing, that I'm happy to be here, you know, uh, that, that the world is a good, a good place for human beings to be. Um, so, and, and I don't mean, mean that as a cop out. Like I do think, you know, I chose to become a scientist, like I said before, because I have a particular interest in these things, right? Like I chose to become a scientist and not a medical doctor because of a particular fascination, right? And so to find beauty in the thing that you give so much of your life to, that is such a part of your vocation as a human being, your work, um, it, it, it contributes in a different way, I think, to your, to your level of satisfaction, right? That if I only see beauty on Saturday morning walking through the park, then, you know, nine to five, or as a scientist, much worse than nine to five, uh, right. <laughs> Monday through Friday, uh, you, you'd be miserable, right? Because, because you think beauty only exists out there. So, so seeing beauty in work for me is what keeps me going and is what makes it possible to like be happy working long hours, you know, to be happy continuing to do research in a world where so many people have no interest in what scientists discover anymore, um, discount whatever scientists find um, as part of, you know, the, what, whatever the elites are saying, whatever. Uh, so, so, I mean, to, to, to stay motivated, to keep working now, the fact that it's beautiful is really important to me. Beauty at Work is brought to you by Templeton Religion Trust. If you enjoyed this clip, go check out the full episode. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps get the word out about the show. Thanks and see you next time.